George Floyd, Nigeria, and the elusive search for social justice. A fortnight ago, a 12-man jury in the state of Minneapolis, United States of America, entered the guilty verdict on all three counts slammed against Derek Chauvin, a police officer inducted in the killing of Mr. George Floyd while in the course of duty, in what many critics say was underpinned by racism. Of course, the sheer eruption of global outrage against the incident last year, even in the middle of the pandemic, leading to the birth of the Black Lives Matter movement in the United States and many other countries around the world contextualized what it meant for race relations in the United States and the world at large, hence the global outcry for justice. That justifiable demand was no doubt heeded in that verdict of the jury, which leaves the convicted officer with a punishment of at least 40 years in prison, according to Minneapolis law. The celebration that greeted the verdict in the United States, both amongst black and white communities, speaks volumes of the role of justice in uniting and melding societies around the common cause, in this instance, race equality. It was Sheikh with Madame Fodio who said that a kingdom can endure unbelief, but it cannot endure with injustice. This saying puts in great perspective the important role of social justice in any society, and we saw it in a great display in the Derek Chauvin trial, given how the verdict has served to shape the conversation around racism in America. Unfortunately, this is one tool that Nigeria has not been able to properly deploy towards building a just and equitable society that has for too long eluded us. Nigeria has had many instances of police brutality and the extrajudicial killing of Nigerians by law enforcement agencies with little or no consequences for those involved. A particular case that parallels the circumstances of the George Floyd incident is the gruesome murder of six young Nigerians in the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, in the year 2005 by operatives of the Nigerian police in what is now popularly referred to as the Apple killing. Many years after, the senior officers inducted in the horrific incident have all been freed, and a few years ago, one of them, Ibrahim Danjuma, was elevated to the rank of commissioner of police. And who can forget the case of retired police officer James Wanfo of the notorious Okuzu Sars, whose reputation for ordering the killing of suspects in the custody of the now disbanded police department became a public knowledge last year. Despite the public outcry in the wake of the NSAS protest, it is an indictment of a criminal justice system that he remains at large. These two instances and the many others that aggregated to fuel the campaign against police brutality last year are ugly reminders of how we have been unable to deploy the instrument of justice to build a just and equitable society as the Americans have done with the George Floyd case. The alluring words of our national motto reads, unity and faith, peace and progress. While these are noble ideas, it is doubtful if they can be attained in an atmosphere of social and economic injustice, which has been the order of the day in the over 60 years of our claims to nationhood. To turn a new leaf, therefore, we must take another look at our corporate approach to the very important value of justice. The reason is not hard to seek, for as Prof. Wally Schwenker once said, justice is the first condition of our humanity, and I dare say, our nationhood. Mm. To serve with heart <laughs> and might, <laughs> one, one nation, nation bound in freedom, peace and unity. I'm going to shake it up from there. Yeah. We don't want no peace. We want equal rights and, and justice. justice. <laughs> so it's actually for the mental to so every society. Just, just it, like Absolutely. It, and everybody it. wants to have this mm. feeling mm. that if it comes to my turn, I'm going to get the same, um, the same justice. Yeah, exactly. You know, and unfortunately in our society, if you take a case to the court, there's a Yoruba saying that says, Ah, king to court de dore. That means mm -hmm. if you take your fellow person to the court, the you will fight. never be friends with them. Already, they're telling you don't go to court. Yeah. Yeah. Then you feel you, you feel spited, and there is no place for you to take your course to. But I don't know where we're going to head towards in terms of justice. I don't have any, any solution in mind. I think the first place to start is the police. Mm. And like I always tell people that you cannot, if you keep complaining about the police, it won't get us anywhere. All right. Because the police themselves, they are handicapped. Number one. I was watching a movie recently where 
almost everything that happened was played out because they had a camera. Even the uh, George Floyd thing, yeah. mm. you had a camera, mm. you had the people who were recorded, yeah. and there was an outcry. And that's the place where you had the system. Now, look at it. Even in a, in a country like the USA, where you have a system, a structure, George Floyd was not the first person to be killed in 20, was it 2019 or 2020? 2020, 2020. Yeah, 2020. It won't be the last. It won't be the last. Yeah. Many people were, were killed other. after him. There was this guy, this video of a guy that was jogging, mm. and I mean, two white guys were... You know, what has happened to him? So you see, even in that case where you have everything, there's still a bit of injustice. Yeah. Let alone our country where you have nobody calm, the people are underpaid, the policeman on the street is angry, he needs to, I mean, everything. The salary of the judiciary, I think the last time I read, has not been reviewed not in been over reviewed, a decade. Yeah, exactly. That's about ridiculous. 12 years. You know, so how then do you get justice? So it's not about just asking for it. It's about pushing. Let's first push for those people to get what they need. They need justice before they can give us justice. Oh, true. Because if the National Assembly, look at how much they, they budget for themselves, the executives get their pay, they travel, but just my salary and even my uniform that I, that I wear as a police officer is so tattered and I don't have money to buy it. I wear slippers. All these things will come up to injustice. We're human beings. I agree that the justice system, you know, has a lot that needs to be done and we are here again talking about it um all motion and no movement mm -hmm. so how do we move from the no motion to no movement i mean maybe we should you, employ you know, graduates to, as police officers okay but Let's you see even if you yeah, employ the graduates but, 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 but they are graduate police officers yeah. well, but, but yes a lot of them looking at, sorry i'm not even looking at the issue i want to look at the issue in a larger context okay i want to take it outside the scope of police brutality and all of that I'm looking at it in the larger context of the Nigerian state mm. and how injustice has been actually, when you look at all that's happened in the country, it ties to the question of injustice. injustice. Mm. You understand? Whether in the judiciary, the whether the security we are facing in the country. Some people have argued that why we have banditry, terrorism, and all whatnot. It's because so many persons have been denied justice mm. over, over a long time ago. Of course, and the, justice the doesn't have to be... six boys are still flowing. Yeah, so yeah. Imagine, Certainly, we cannot can go to bed and sleep with our eyes closed. The families feel that they have been shortchanged mm -hmm. by the Nigerian the state. Will you pray for that country if you are the family members? Of course, you, what will you give but, but, them? But, but, but also Nothing but negative also words. Also note that when there is no consequence, mm. People will mm. do as they like. No, no, so, 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 yes, impunity comes when there is no consequence. Mm. So, one of the one of the big issues for us here is that there's too much impunity, mm. and um, impunity is the reason some people have been able to even get a hold on power yes. and retain that That's hold it. on power, and they would not want to stop it but because then, if you do, they become irrelevant. In a way of wrapping up. I think to the extent that uh, there should be consequences for actions, mm -hmm. uh, the institution that has been set up under the constitution to address uh, feelings of injustice yeah. is the judiciary. So I think we, it, has to, um, it has to come back to them because they are the only organ who have the, the mandate mm -hmm. of resolving dispute between private True. citizens and between governments mm -hmm. and True. private citizens. Give them Unfortunately, autonomy. thank you. Unfortunately, <laughs> the judiciary, for it to be able to function optimally, mm -hmm. it has to be in independent, not just being independent, truly independent truly. to be able to function. Mm -hmm. If you watch the George Floyd trial, you appreciate the judicial process. Mm -hmm. You see ju judicial process in action. And I don't know if some of you watched it. Mm -hmm. So I think if we actually have to solve this problem, we have to, to a large extent, invest more in our judiciary, make it more independ independent and primed to resolve issues Raymond, let's that go come to, to the it. Next topic. Comfort is talking about marriages and divorce after the break. Don't go anywhere.